everyone, it's Sevi. So we are having your first child, and though there are a number of guide videos on how to build child, I want to talk about his more specific gameplay mechanics, since his talent descriptions can be a bit confusing or overwhelming. So here are some child gameplay tips, clarifications, and frequently asked questions in order to maximize your child's potential. We'll cover his scaling, burst types, energy regeneration, riptide, and more. This isn't a build video exactly, but more of an analysis and explanation of child's kit. However, I will mention some building tips from time to time. If there's a specific question you want to go straight to, check the timestamps and don't be afraid to skip ahead. So for you first time parents, let's dive in. Is child's melee stance considered normal attack damage or skill damage? This is one very basic but important thing to clarify first so you know what effects work or don't work on him. Although it levels up based on the elemental skill talent, child's melee attacks are normal attack damage. That's why 4-piece Heart of Depth seems tailor-made for child. Cast his skill and you get a 30% boost on his normals. Keep this in mind if you're looking at weapon, artifact, or teammate effects which provide damage bonuses. So for example, Stringless doesn't benefit his melee stance because its description only modifies the elemental skill damage, not the normal attack damage. It's not a good weapon for main DPS child, but it's great for burst showcases. On the other hand, a weapon like Rust or Thundering Pulse will add to his melee damage since they modify normal attack damage. How does Child's Riptide Mark work? Riptide is the core mechanic of Child's DPS, so it's essential to understand how it works. Every time Child's normals crit in melee stance, it will apply a Riptide mark on the opponent. No crit means no Riptide application, hence why a high crit rate is important on him. You can also use Child's ranged charged attacks, or his ranged burst to apply it. Triggering the Riptide mark with a melee attack or ranged charged shot results in AoE damage and, if an enemy with a mark dies, the mark will transfer to nearby opponents. Now the Riptide itself has different multipliers and scalings which can be a bit confusing so bear with me. The Riptide Flash, inflicted by the charged shot, scales from his normal attack talent. So does his Riptide Burst, the damage dealt when the Riptide transfers from defeated opponents. These are both considered normal attack damage, so if you use a weapon like Rust or the 4-piece effect of Heart of Depths or Shimanawa, which adds to normal attack damage, then they will only affect these Riptide effects. But the Riptide damage triggered by his melee attacks, called Riptide Slash, is considered as elemental skill damage and will scale from his skill talent. Whereas the Riptide triggered by his burst scales from his burst talent and is considered elemental burst damage. So weapons like Stringless or Polar Star which add to the elemental skill and burst damage will only affect the damage of these Riptide effects. However, the 4-piece effect of Heart of Depths or Shimanawa won't since they modify normal attack damage. Lastly, only Child can trigger the AoE Riptide Hydro damage. However, if the opponent dies, then the Riptide explosion will trigger regardless of whoever is on the field. What's the main difference between his range burst and his melee burst? The first main difference is their initial damage. As you can see, the melee stance burst has a larger multiplier. Apart from that, they're used for different purposes. His range burst applies the Riptide mark along with Hydro damage. This is useful so that when you change to Child's melee stance, you can start triggering Riptide explosions right away instead of having to apply them first. There's this great trick as well where you apply Pyro to your enemies and then rip out Child's range burst for an instant vaporized delete. As for his melee burst, it will only trigger the AoE Hydro explosion on enemies already having the Riptide mark. It will then remove the Riptide status from them, so you'll need to apply it again if they're still alive. It's best to use this burst when most, if not all, of the enemies have Riptide on them, so you can stack multiple Riptide explosions. How does Child generate energy by himself? Specifically with Child, there are multiple ways to generate particles or energy. First, Child's ranged burst refunds 20 energy. Second, he gets energy from triggering Riptide in his melee stance, but it doesn't happen 100% of the time. Sometimes he gets a Hydro Particle, sometimes a Universal one, and sometimes none. I think there's also an internal cooldown mechanism that allows Child to only generate particles every now and then, not every time he triggers Riptide. Third, he also generates a Hydro Particle when he triggers Riptide using his charged shot. Take note, not when he applies, but when he triggers an already existing Riptide application. 
However, he doesn't get energy from entering his melee stance. He also inherently doesn't refund energy from his melee burst, but of course, he usually generates some particles from enemies dying. This is why Child works best with multiple mobs and why you should have enough crit rate on him at least 50%. The faster you can apply Riptide and trigger it, and the more enemies you can use it on, the more energy you can generate. While Child will of course benefit from the added ER, I wouldn't say that he has glaring energy recharge problems based on my experience. Against single bosses, it can be hard to get his burst up. You can also mitigate this by putting batteries on your team, the best hydro battery being Sing Chu. Does Child need to be played with a shield? The international team, one of his best teams, doesn't have a shielder thanks to the crowd control and stagger that the team offers. But by himself, Child can get interrupted a lot. If you're not confident with your dodging and iframing skills, you can include a shielder instead of, say, a swirler. But that will result in some overall damage loss in exchange for security and gameplay comfort. Otherwise, I often pair him with Zhongli or Beidou. How is Child's skill cooldown calculated? Child's skill cooldown increases the longer he stays in melee stance. If he's in melee for 1.5 to 4 seconds, the cooldown will range from 7 to 10 seconds. From 5 to 7 seconds of melee, cooldown ranges from 10 to 12 seconds. And from 8 seconds to 29 seconds melee, his cooldown will be 6 seconds longer than his melee duration. If you max out Child's melee stance of 30 seconds, you will end up with a 45 second cooldown. You will get this red symbol on top of him if you're close to maxing out his cooldown. If you want to end up with a manageable cooldown, I would personally recommend keeping him on the field for 10 seconds or so, or at least just long enough to use your off-field supports for his hydro-enabled reactions. Does Child need C1 to be good? Let's take a look at his C1. It says that it reduces his skill cooldown by 20%. So if we refer to his C0 cooldown and compute the C1 cooldown, we get something like this. So this is a question that gets thrown around a lot. Personally, from my experience playing him at C0, his C1 is not necessary to play him well. In the open world, mobs can die easily anyway that even if you stay too long in his form, the cooldown won't be a problem. But in Spiral Abyss and boss fights, you're really not meant to stay too long with Child's melee form. The way I see it, you're meant to first set up your sub DPSs or supports so that they can help Child do more damage while he's in his melee form. For example, if you have Sheng Ling as his teammate, then you could use him in conjunction as long as Pyronado lasts. If you're doing your team rotations properly, then he shouldn't stay too long in the field. As soon as you no longer have your other characters' abilities active, then switch him out, generate energy with your other characters, use their skills, and recharge their bursts, do your usual setup, etc., and by the time that's done, Child should be ready to go again. And if you need a second or two for his skill to cool down, then do some ranged attacks or a charged shot while waiting. However, don't let me stop you from getting his C1! It's a nice quality of life upgrade that gives him more DPS window time, something that child mains can very much appreciate. So that's going to be all for this video everyone, I hope that I was able to answer some of your questions in your preparation for your first child. If you have more questions about him or anything to add as current child havers, leave them in the comments below. We're going to have a summoning session for Polar Star once patch 2.2 comes out on my Twitch channel, so look forward to that comparison here on YouTube too. Don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already and I will see you soon. Take care!